Hello everyone and welcome to SLO Conf. My name is James Strong. I'm the lead solutions architect here at ChainGuard. And today we're going to discuss SLOs for your software supply chain security. But first, let's discuss what is a software supply chain. I like to think of it as everything that is involved with the development, building, and packaging of software between the enterprise and the consumer of software. So it includes the source where we, the code lives, how we build and package the software, all of the testing frameworks and everything that's involved, and all of the dependencies that are injected during build time. Now, with that chaining of build processes and packaging comes dependencies and issues where attacks can happen. But what are some supply chain attacks that could happen? Here, with every link in the chain and process, an attacker could introduce malicious code into the process. Like at B, when the PHP attack compromised PHP's self-hosted Git servers and injected malicious code into the PHP code base. Or at the well-known SolarWinds attack, where the attacker compromised the build platform, installed and implanted an injected malicious code behavior during the build so that after code was completed to the build process, it looked like legitimate binaries from SolarWinds. Or at F, where the CodeCov attack happened, where attackers used leaked credentials to upload a malicious artifact to a storage bucket, which users downloaded directly. Or at possibly at H, where the Browserify attack happened with typo squatting, where attackers uploaded a malicious package with a similar name as the original. Now, how do we stop these attacks from happening? There's a new security framework that's available called Salsa. Salsa, Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts. It's a security framework, a checklist of sorts for standards and controls to prevent tampering. It helps improve integrity and in secure packages and infrastructure in your projects. It has varying levels for increasing security controls, starting at level one to level four. We'll talk through some of the levels as we go through the SLOs, but this is the overarching SLO that you should be looking to integrate into your projects, reaching at least Salsa level two or three. Most enterprises won't need level four, which is the highest level, which requires hermetic builds, two-person reviews, and all of your dependencies and reproducible builds. Salsa is great to talk about your security of your supply chains overall, but let's talk about some specific SLOs that are related. We can talk about the percentage of the signed containers or artifacts in your organization, the number of container image sources, the MFA requirements for commits and access to the source control, the mean time to resolution of CVEs, at the team level, the average age of containers overall running inside of your organization, and the percentage of artifacts with provenance. The percentage of signed artifacts. But James, GPG keys are hard to manage and use, and no one really signs each other's GPG keys anymore. So how should I do this and when? Well, the question of when really comes in any time there is a new build to be released. If the software gets updated, the new packages, the new containers, all of that should be signed as part of the release process. But how do we do that? We can use new tools like Cosign from SigStore that can be used to make signing artifacts much easier. It supports blobs, OCI artifacts like Docker images. In the example, we can see that we've generated a key pair. We've also written out the public and private keys. We've used that to sign a container image with that private key and verify it with that public key. You can make that available to your end users to verify that the signed image was from your public key. We can also do keyless signing. More of that's available at SIGStore. 
the container image sources, where your containers come from and how they are ran and the number of sources for those matter. There are many to choose from, but your images in production should come from one trusted source, one that is connected to your build pipelines and that adhere to your security policies. You should move towards one source instead of allowing anyone to run any container from anywhere. MFA requirements for your commits. Every change in your revision history should have strongly identified actors and users with timestamps. This is a Salsa level three and four requirement. So you should shoot for any application that is going towards level three and four to have 100% authors having MFA. It's also good security practice for any of your other logins. Now, I wanted to include this one, and I thought it'd be a little controversial, but the mean time to resolution of a CVE, how long does it take your team to patch your applications? Now, there's a new organization called the Open SSF, and their recommendation in their best practices is two weeks for the project's initial response time to any vulnerability reported. In the last six months, should be less than two weeks. Now that's the initial response time. Organizations and teams should track their ability to resolve that CVE once it's been identified that it does affect their software products. Reducing the attack surface also includes reducing the time a vulnerable piece of software is out there in the wild. That also includes the average age of your containers. If you're reducing your MTTR of your CVEs, you should, that should also help reduce the average age of your containers. Replacing containers is a good security measure. They should be treated like software, versioned, scanned, and updated often. Provenance and having your artifacts have provenance is another SLO that should be tracked. Provenance is the ability to track your software back to the source, and it helps define all of the moving parts in your complex supply chain. It needs to be there from the beginning. It is a Salsa level one requirement that it's available. And then it is also a layer level two that it is signed. Suppose that someone downloads the tar GZ in this example we have on the page and they extract it and they run a make command with the extra arguments on the screen it should result in the 567 hash. The provenance gives users verifiable information about software artifacts, describing where, when, and how software was produced. Being able to identify how your software is built with provenance, reducing the resolution time of a CVE, can help keep your containers and your software young and healthy. Signing your provenance and the artifacts themselves let others trust software is from your organization. Some of these help increase the Tulsa levels of your project, and all of them help increase the security of your software supply chains. I've been James Strong. Thank you very much. Have a great SLO conf, everyone. Bye.